in a small town called Akope, there lived a beautiful young woman named Ifoma. She was in her late twenties, with long flowing hair and a bright, cheerful smile. Ifoma was filled with dreams and hopes as she started her new life with her charming husband, Chijuke. She admired her mother, Mrs. Karu, seeing her as a perfect role model. But little did Ifoma know that her world was about to change. Mrs. Kalu was a wealthy woman in her mid 40s known as a sugar mommy. She loved the glamorous life and attracted many young men who admired her. Although she appeared kind and caring, Mrs. Kalu was also manipulative. She enjoyed the attention and power that came with her relationship with younger men using her charm to get what she wanted. Chijoke, a former husband, was in his early 30s. He was handsome and smooth-talking, with a knack for charming people. Although he seemed loyal and supportive, Chijoke was struggling financially. The temptation of Mrs. Carl's luxurious lifestyle led him down a dangerous path. Seeking comfort and excitement, he found himself in an affair with Ifoma's mother. It all began innocently. Chijoke approached Mrs. Kalu for advice about a business opportunity. She was happy to help and like his charisma. Their meeting, which started out professionally, became more personal as they shared their problems and ambition. One rainy afternoon, they met at a cozy cafe to discuss business. As they talk, Mrs. Carlo opened up about her frustrations at home, and Chichuku shared his struggles. The connection between them grew stronger, leading to late night phone calls and supportive texts that became more intimate. One evening, Mrs. Carlo invited Chichuku over for dinner, pretending it was about business, but the intimate setting quickly led to a kiss. Meanwhile, Ifoma was happy in her new home, believing she had a perfect marriage. She loved Chijuge and admired her mother, feeling blissfully unaware of the betrayal happening behind her back. Mrs. Karu and Chijuke were careful to hide their relationship. They met in secret places, exchanged hidden messages, and kept their distance in public. The excitement of their relationship consumed them and they became skilled at covering their tracks. Back at home, Ifoma continued her life, completely unaware of the storm brewing around her. Chijuke played the role of the loving husband perfectly, ensuring Ifoma had no reason to doubt him. As the affair went on, Mrs. Kalu and Chijuke found themselves tangled in lies. They both understood the risks of being caught, but their attraction was too strong to resist. Despite everything, Ifama remained in the dark, cherishing the time with Chijuke and holding her mother with high regard. One evening, while having dinner, Ifama said, Chijuke, I feel so blessed to have you. I can't wait to start a family with you. Chijuke smiled, Ifama, my love, you are my everything. We will build a beautiful life together. Meanwhile, Mrs. Carlo and Chijuke met secretly. She would tease him, Chijuke, you are so charming and loving. I can't even resist your smile. You are all I ever wanted in a man. Chijuke would smile and replied, Madam, even you, I love you so much. Just don't let anyone find out. As if Oma and Chijuke were preparing for their honeymoon, Mrs. Carlo called Chijuke and asked him to meet her at a hotel. He felt curious but agreed. When he arrived, Mrs. Carlo was already there, looking beautiful in a red dress. Chijuke, I want to see you alone before you leave, she said with a smile. Chijuke was surprised but he replied, Okay, what is on your mind, ma? Mrs. Carlo leaned closer, her voice very low. I just wanted to tell you how much I care about you. You are a wonderful man, and I am so happy Ifoma is with you. Thank you, ma. That means a lot, he said, feeling flattered. Mrs. Kalu took his hand. I want to show you how much I appreciate you. 
she said, leading him into the bedroom. Though he hesitated at first, but Mrs. Carlo Cham won over. They spent the day together in the hotel, lost in their secret romance. The next day, Chijuki and Ifama flew off to a beautiful island for their honeymoon. They enjoyed the beach, explored the area, and cherished each other's company. One morning, while sleeping, Chijuki's phone rang. Hello, he answered, sounding relaxed. Good morning, my love, a voice said. Hope your honeymoon is great. Chijoki laughed, recognizing the voice. He glanced at Ifoma, who was still asleep, and stepped out to talk. Yes, it is amazing, he replied. Thank you for asking. The voice continued to talk. Don't forget to come and see me when you come back home. I've missed you so much. Chijoki laughed, feeling no guilt. I will definitely come and see you, he said eagerly. Good boy, Mrs. Carlos said. I'll be waiting for you. When he hung up, Ifama was already awake. Who was that? She asked, rubbing her eyes. Chijuki smiled and brushed it off. Just a friend, he replied. Don't worry. Ifama nodded and he returned to bed feeling carefree. As Mrs. Carlo and Chijuki met secretly more often, their attraction grew. They became lost in a world where only their love mattered. But little did they know, their actions were putting Ifoma's happiness at risk. Chijuki began to act distant, and Ifoma, unaware of the truth, thought he was stressed from work. She tried to support him, but it only seemed to push him further away. Meanwhile, Mrs. Carlo struggled with guilt. She knew she was betraying her daughter, but her feelings for Chijuki consumed her. Three months later, Ifoma was filled with joy. When she discovered she was pregnant, she thought this news would bring her and Chijuki closer. But for Chijuki, the excitement was mixed with guilt. He knew Mrs. Kalu was still in his life. Mrs. Kalu was thrilled about the pregnancy, but saw it as a way to keep Chijuki tied to her. The stress of their double life began to take a toll. Chijuki grew more withdrawn from Ifoma. And Ifoma thought it was the pressure of becoming parents. One morning, Chijuki kissed Ifoma goodbye and said he was going on a five-day business trip. Safe journey, my love, Ifoma said, completely trusting him and unaware of the truth behind his smile. Unbeknownst to Ifoma, Chijuki and her mother, Mrs. Carlo, had planned a secret getaway. They were excited to spend five days away from the stress and lies that connected them together. They drove to a quiet resort, surrounded by beautiful gardens and peaceful lakes. When they arrived, Mrs. Carlo looked stunning in her blue sundress. She kissed Chijoki passionately and she said, Now that Ifoma is pregnant, we need to focus more on us. If not of her being my daughter, I wouldn't share you with anyone. You belong to me, Chijoki. Chichioke couldn't resist her beauty. They spent their days relaxing by the pool and their nights together. Meanwhile, Ifoma was eagerly waiting for Chijuke to come back. Her belly was getting rounder and she filled her time with parental yoga and baby shopping, completely unaware of what was happening. As the days went by, Chijuke and Mrs. Carlo Bond grew, but so did their secrets. They knew they had to be careful, but they couldn't stay away from each other. When their getaway was over, they returned home, still hiding their secrets. Ifama welcomed Chijuke happily. Chijuke, I have missed you so much, Ifama said, smiling at him. But Mrs. Carlos' jealousy only grew stronger. She began to make Chijuke feel guilty for even looking at Ifama. Hmm, remember she's just the mother of your child, she whispered. I am the one who you really love. Chijuke felt confused. He loved Ifoma, but he was drawn to Mrs. Carlo. As time passed, he became more distant. Ifoma noticed and tried to connect with him, but his heart was fading. Mrs. Carlo whispered sweet sense in Chijoke's ear. We cannot let anyone find out about us, she said, her eyes filled with mischief. Chijoke nodded, caught up in her charm, not realizing the trap he was in. Meanwhile, Ifama was happy and didn't know that her husband was sleeping away. Finally, Ifama gave birth to a beautiful baby boy, 
She was overjoyed, and she and Chijeke welcomed their son with love. Mrs. Kalu came over to help with the Omogo, the Igbo tradition where a mother helped her daughter after childbirth. Ifama was grateful. Mama, thank you for being here. I don't know what I would have done without you, she said. But Mrs. Carlo had her own plans. She was happy to be close to Chijoke and find ways to touch him and steal glasses when Ifama wasn't looking. Chijoke felt excited every time Mrs. Carlo came near to him. Ifama, not knowing what was going on, kept thanking her mother. Mama, you are such a blessing to me. Oh. I am so thankful, she always say. Mrs. Carlo smiled, knowing she had Chijoke right where she wanted him. With her staying longer, she planned to keep him close and hide their affair while Ifoma remained happily unaware. As the night came, Ifoma and her baby fell asleep, tired from the day's work. Mrs. Kalu waited until everything was quiet, then she sent a message to Chijoke. Come to my room. I need to talk to you. Chijoke's heart raced. He knew what that meant. He quickly left his room, careful not to wake Ifoma up, and tiptoed to Mrs. Kalu's room. When he entered, Mrs. Kalu looked at him with desire. Lock the door, she whispered. Chichoke locked the door. Feeling excited, they kissed passionately and held each other closely. Their love was intense and they spent secret nights together. While Ifama and the baby slept peacefully, unaware of what was happening. As days went by, Chichoke and Mrs. Kalu kept meeting in secret. During the day, they would look at each other, their hearts racing with excitement and fear. But Chijoke felt guilty. He knew he was living a lie, and it weighed heavily on him. Chijoke, you belong to me, oh, Mrs. Carl whispered. Forget about Ifoma. She's just the mother of your child, and she cannot do nothing. Chijoke nodded, but felt trapped. Looking at Ifoma, who was sleeping, made him feel even worse. Mrs. Carl grew possessive and started to question him. Chijuke, are you still in love with Ifoma? She asked, her voice very sharp. No, mama, Chijuke replied, but he could feel her doubt. The next morning, Mrs. Carlo rushed to the kitchen to cook breakfast, but Ifoma stopped her. Mama, please ask me first. Chijuke does not like anyone else cooking for him. She said, sounding a little jealous. Oh, my daughter, I didn't know. I just wanted to help you, Mrs. Kalu said with a fake smile. Then Chijoke walked in and said, Ifoma, your mom's cooking is really good though. I think it is even better than yours. Ifoma looked at him with these gogs. Chijoke, don't say that. My cooking is good too. Mrs. Kalu smiled, happy to see Ifoma upset, and she said, Chijoke, Ifoma's cooking is nice though. Ifoma forced a smile, but inside, she felt worried. Why was her husband saying nice things about her mother's cooking? It felt wrong. As days went by, Ifoma felt more unease. Chichuki seemed distant and she felt like she was losing him. Meanwhile, her mother, Mrs. Kalu, was getting closer to Chichuki. One evening, Mrs. Kalu wore a low-cut blouse at dinner. Ifoma felt uncomfortable and said, Mama, can you cover up please? At least not in front of my husband. Oh, I am just trying to look good, Mrs. Carlo replied with a smile. As weeks went by, Ifoma noticed her mother doing everything for Chijoke. She cooked his favorite meal and even helped him pick clothes. Ifoma thought her mother was just being helpful. Chijoke felt torn. He loved Ifoma, but he also liked Mrs. Carlo. He knew it was wrong, but he couldn't stop thinking about her. Mrs. Kanu used her charm to keep him closer. Their secrets kept getting heavy, but Ifoma didn't see the danger. She trusted her mother and her husband completely. As weeks passed, Chijuke was overwhelmed with guilt. It felt like he was living two lives, and the body of his lies became more unbearable. Mrs. Kalu, sensing his discomfort, held him even tighter. She would send him tempting messages reminding him of their secret meeting and the passion they shared. On the other hand, Ifoma was too busy caring for their baby and handling the house to notice anything unusual. One evening, while they were having dinner, Mrs. Carlo casually mentioned that she would be staying with them for a few more months. 
The farmer was excited and Chichoke pretended to agree, trying to maintain his heart. Later that night, Chichoke couldn't stand the idea of being alone with Mrs. Carlo. He faked a headache and slipped away to his bedroom. But Mrs. Carlo followed him, her eyes filled with desire. We need to talk, she whispered, her voice low and serious. Chichoke's heart pounded as he let her in. They stood close in the dark room, their bodies almost touching. What is it? Chijuke asked him, but his voice was shaky. I want more of you, Chijuke, Mrs. Kalu said. I want all of you. I want you to be committed to me. Chijuke felt a chill run through him. He knew he was in too deep, but he couldn't resist her. He was stuck in his own webs of lies, and he had no idea how to get out. As they stood there in tense silence, Ifana slept peacefully in the next room, unaware of the betrayal tearing her family apart. Chichoke's heart ached as he looked into Mrs. Carlo's eyes, his mind racing with the consequences. He was risking everything, his family, his marriage and his reputation, all for a brief moment of passion. Mrs. Carlo tightened her grip on his arm, her nails digging into his skin. I need you, Chichoke. I need you. Please, I need you, she said softly. Chichuke felt guilt wash over him, but he couldn't spoon away. He nodded, unable to speak. As they separated, Chichuke felt trapped in a nightmare. During the day, he acted like a loving husband and father, but inside, he was weighed down by secrets. Meanwhile, Mrs. Carlo became more possessive, constantly testing and cuddling him, her demands growing. Chichuki struggled to keep up the lie, feeling like everything was about to collapse. In the middle of all this, Ifana remained clueless, trusting her husband and mother completely, but the lies were building up like a thick bomb, threatening to blow everything apart. Months later, as Mrs. Carlo prepared to leave, she hugged Ifana tightly. My dear, I'll come back soon to visit my grandchild though. Please take care of him and Chichuki for me. As she was leaving, she turned to Chijoke and said, Chijoke, can I talk to you for a minute in private? Ifona, unaware of the tension, smiled and said, Mama, I'll go and get Jinyo ready for bed. Take your time. Once Ifona was out of earshot, Mrs. Carlo leaned closer to Chijoke and whispered, Don't forget, I love you so much and expect my call. I have a surprise for you. She smiled and blinked before walking away. Chichuke's heart raced as he wondered what she had in store. Weeks later, Mrs. Carlo tightened her grip on Chichuke by showering him with expensive gifts. She gave him luxurious watches, designer clothes, and even planned fancy vacation for them. To keep their affair hidden, she used fake names and secret bank accounts, but her smartest move was still coming. She started giving Chichuke big roles in her business making him the face of her most important deal. Chichoke was now fully trapped in her world, and she controlled everything. As Chichoke became more richer and more successful, he also became more dependent on Mrs. Carlo. He couldn't resist her charm, and she made sure to remind him of it more often. Don't forget Chichoke, she would say. I made you who you are today, and you owe me everything, your life and your time. However, Ifona was unaware of the dangers, celebrated Chijuke's success, not knowing what was really behind it. Meanwhile, Mrs. Carlo felt more powerful with each day passing. She had Chijuke exactly where she wanted him, under her control. But as Chijuke got deeper into this mess, his family life started falling apart. He couldn't understand why he felt distance from Ifona and his child. He was trapped in a cycle of guilt and desire with no way out. As the weeks passed, Ifama started to feel something was wrong. Chichoke was acting different, always busy with work and hardly ever at home. One day, she called her mother and shared her worries. Mama, I don't know what is going on with Chichoke. He is always away and when he's around, it's like he's not even here. I feel like I am losing him. Mrs. Carlo listened, pretending to care, but her real intention was hidden. If Ifona, my dear, men are like that so. They need their space. Those business trips are for your own good, trust me. 
he's making more money for you. Ifoma felt unsure, but Mrs. Carlo quickly added, Ifoma, you are too worried. Just focus on your baby, my dear. Allow Chijuke to handle his business. He's a man and he will always have things to deal with. Ifoma tried to accept her mother's advice, but deep down, she knew something was wrong. Why was her mother so quick to brush aside her worries? And why did it feel like she was being pushed away from her own husband? She tried to tell herself she was just overthinking. Meanwhile, Mrs. Kano was happy that she had Chiji okay and Ifoma was slowly pulling away. Her plan was working perfectly and soon Chiji okay would be hers. Ifoma's life felt like a never-ending cycle of loneliness. Chiji okay's constant business trip and late nights at the office left her feeling abandoned. She tried to fill the emptiness with her child and hobbies, but the ache in her heart only grew. One evening, as she took her baby into sleep, Ifama felt overwhelmed. She needed someone to talk to, someone who would understand her. She picked her phone and called her mother, hoping for some comfort. Mother, I am so lonely, Ifama said, her voice shaking. Chichoke is never home, and I feel like I'm raising our child alone. This is calm one voice came through the phone. Ifama, my dear, I know things have been tough lately, but I am here for you. Let's talk about it. I will help you however I can. Tears filled Ifama's eyes as she opened up to her mother, grateful for her support. But little did she know, Mrs. Carlos' kindness had a sinister plan to keep Chijuke wrapped in her webs of light. Ifoma, I will always be here for you, Mrs. Carlo assured her. Family is everything. We must stick together no matter what. Ifoma nodded. Even though her mother couldn't see her, she felt comforted, unaware of the darkness behind her mother's words. As week passed, Ifoma found peace in her mother's company. Mrs. Carlo was always there to listen and offer encouragement. Slowly, Ifoma began to regain her sense of purpose and identity. Meanwhile, Chichoke's business trip grew more frequently, and his calls to Ifoma became less regular. He would test her briefly, always apologizing for being away and promising to make it up to her, but Ifoma couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. One evening, as she was preparing dinner, Ifoma received an unexpected delivery, a beautiful banquet of flour with a card that read, To my dearest wife, I am always thinking about you. Tears of joy filled her eyes as she realized Chijuke was still thinking of her, despite his absence. But Ifoma didn't know that the flower wearing Chijuke's idea, Mrs. Carlo had arranged the gesture, using her influence to keep Ifoma calm and unaware of the truth. Ifoma's heart was filled with love as she admired the flower. She felt reassured that Chijuke still cared about their relationship, but the reality was far different. Mrs. Kalu had manipulated Chijuke into sending the flowers, keeping Ifoma in the dark about the growing distance between her and her husband, and it worked. Ifoma's worry faded away, replaced by a renewed hope in their marriage, but the deception deepened and the gap between them continued to widen. Ifoma tries to dismiss her feelings of abandonment, telling herself that Chijuke was just busy with work. Yet, the ache in her heart grew stronger, making her feel like she was losing her husband bit by bit. One night, as she lay in bed, Ifoma received a call from an unknown number. She hesitated, unsure whether to answer, but something pushed her to pick up. Hendo, she said softly. Ifoma couldn't recognize the voice on the other end, but the voice said, Ifoma, I have something to tell you about your husband. Ifoma's heart wakes. What is it? But before she could get an answer, the line went off. Ifoma's heart raced after the mysterious call. She tried to call the number again, but it was unreachable. What is going on? She said to herself, pacing around the room. She couldn't shake off the feeling that something was wrong, but she pushed it aside, convincing herself it was just her imagination. Meanwhile, Chijuke and Mrs. Kalu were busy with their secrets. They planned a fake business trips and meetings to keep Ifoma clueless. Chijuke's lies were carefully crafted 
and Ifoma's mother knew exactly how to keep Ifoma in the dark. As the days passed, Ifoma's worry deepened. What is happening in my marriage? What is going on? She often wondered, though she tried to fill her time with her child and hobbies, but the loneliness was too much. One evening, Chichoke returned home after a supposed business trip. He brought gifts and apologies. Ifoma, already tired of his excuse, decided to confront him. Chichuke, are you sure all these trips are just for work? I feel like something is wrong, Ifoma said cautiously. Chichuke smiled warmly, as if he had rehearsed this moment a hundred times. Nemoma, you are just stressed, so. All this work is for us, for our future, for our kids, he replied, gently brushing his cheek. Ifoma sighed, feeling a wave of guilt. Maybe she was overthinking things, as Chichuke always had the right words to calm her down. But as they laid in bed that night, a chill ran down her spine. Something still felt off, though she couldn't figure out what. One fateful day, her friend Uche, who was out running around, noticed Chijoke's car parked at a fancy hotel. She was surprised. What is Chijoke doing here? Uche thought to herself. Out of curiosity, she walked into the hotel lobby, and to her shock, she saw Chijoke with a woman laughing and holding hands. The woman's face was turned away. But Uche knew something wasn't right. Later that day, Uche called Ifoma. Ifoma, I don't want to cause any trouble in your marriage. But I saw Chijuke today. Uche began, her voice hesitant. Eh? Where? Where? Biko, tell me where you saw him. Ifoma asked. At the hotel, he was with another woman. I couldn't see her face, but they were holding hands. Ifoma's heart skipped a bit, but she quickly dismissed it. Ucha beg, don't play with me. It's probably nothing. He told me he has been in meetings. Maybe she's just a client. Uche wasn't convinced, but she let it go. Okay, oh, if you say so, Ifoma, just be careful. I am just looking out for you, as a good friend I am. Ifoma laughed it off, convinced that her friend was overreacting. Chichoke would never do that to me, she told herself, but deep inside, doubt began to creep in. Meanwhile, Chichoke and Mrs. Carl were enjoying their secret getaway. They spent their days by the poolside and night at a luxurious dinner. While Ifoma was at home, texting Chichoke sweet messages, his response were filled with love, making her believe everything was fine. When Chichoke returned from his trip, he brought gifts as usual. Where is my beautiful wife? Asamwam, Akugun, Anyambako, your husband is back, my love. Ifoma was overjoyed. She hugged him tightly. Welcome home, my husband. I have missed you so much. She said, unaware of the betrayal beneath the surface. Uche, however, couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. She kept a close eye on Chijoke's movements, determined to find out the truth. One evening, Ifoma decided to confront Chijoke about Uche's suspicion. Chijoke, can I ask you something? She said, her voice filled with concern. Of course, my beautiful wife, you are free to ask me what is on your mind. Chijoke replied smoothly. Eh, my husband, do you remember Uche, my friend? She said she saw you at a hotel with another woman. I know it sounds crazy, but I had to ask you. Chichoke laughed holding Ifoma's hand. Ah, my wife. Uche must be mistaken, though. I was at a meeting. I didn't even leave the room. Do you know that I closed a huge business deal? Don't worry, Nem. I am not that kind of a man. I would never cheat on you. You are my jewel and you are my everything. You have to trust me, okay? Ifoma's tension melted away. She smiled, feeling silly for even doubting him. I knew it. You are my heart, Chijuke. And you are my, he replied, pulling her into a warm hug. As they hugged each other, Ifoma felt her doubts disappearing, trusting that her husband would never deceive her. But little did she know her world was about to end. 
Chichoke died Mrs. Carlos' number the moment he stepped out of the house, his heart beating fast. Hello, Nemoma, Mrs. Carlo answered, her voice soft and allowing. Problem deal, Chijoki whispered, his voice tense. A former friend saw us at the hotel. Mrs. Carlo paused for a moment. Guinea, how? Her voice carrying a hint of worry. Chijoke smiled. Relax, my love. I handled it already. I told the former her friend was saying things. And if former, being a former the gullible girl, she believed everything I said. Mrs. Kalu let out a relief sign. Chijuki, my love. You are smart, oh. If former is completely in the dark, you are too much. Like, you are wonderful, Chijuki. She praised him. Admiration clear in her voice. I know Chijuki responded. Confidence swelling in his chest. She trusts me a lot and she believes anything I tell her. As their secrets continue, Ifoma remained blissfully unaware, but Uche, her friend, was still suspicious. One afternoon, Mrs. Kalu paid a visit to Ifoma and Chijuki. Sitting in their living room, they chatted as though nothing was wrong. While they were deep in conversation, Uche decided to drop by the house hoping to catch Ifoma at home. When she arrived, Ifoma was out, but Uche was surprised to see Mrs. Carlo and Chijuke together. Ah, Uche, welcome, oh. Chijuke greeted her, though he looked slightly uncomfortable. Uche nodded and sat down, her eyes quietly observing their behavior. Something about their interaction felt off, but she couldn't put her finger on it yet. They exchanged small talk, but Uche's sharp eyes caught the way Chijoki kept glancing nervously at his watch and how Mrs. Carlo responded to questions with a slight edge, almost like she was guarding herself. Chijoki, Uche said casually, Um, if Oma told me you've been really busy with work lately, how is it going, my dear? Chijoki hesitated for a second, his eyes flicking to Mrs. Carlo before he replied, Ah, yes, so work has been crazy. Like, you know, deadlines, meeting, you know how it is now. Uche smiled politely, but her suspicions deepened. Something was definitely off between them. Just then, Ifoma came in. Her face lightened up when she saw Uche. Nemo, I am so happy you came. I just went to the market to get something. Have you been waiting for long? How are you? Ifoma asked. Uche shook her head, maxing her inner turmoil with a smile. Not at all. How was the market? Any drama? Come and gist me. Ifoma launched into a lively story about her shopping trip, completely unaware of the tension that had filled the room moments earlier. Uche pretended to listen, but her mind was racing. She was even more convinced that something wasn't right between Chijuke and Mrs. Carlo. As Ifoma chatted, Uche noticed Chijoke's restlessness. He kept glancing at his phone until he stood up. Biko, excuse me, I need to make an important call. He muttered, stepping out of the room quickly. Mrs. Kalu followed, giving Uche a weary glance as she left. Uche's heart pounded. There was no mistaking it now. Something shady was happening, and she was determined to find out the truth. Ifoma, oh, Uche began cautiously. Do you ever get worried about Chijuke's frequent business trips? Ifoma laughed lightly, brushing it off. Uche, my friend, Chijuke is my husband though, and I trust him very well. He's always so busy with work. Nothing they happen, my friend, so don't worry about it. I understand that you care about me and I am grateful to have a friend like you. Uche forced a smile. But deep down, she knew that her friend's word might soon come crashing down. As Uche listened to Ifoma's story, her mind kept drifting. Something wasn't right and she could feel it in her bone. Chichoke and Mrs. Kalu had been gone for too long and when they finally returned, both of them looked on ease. Uche decided it was time to talk to Ifoma, but she had to be careful. Ifoma, be cool. Can I talk to you for a minute? Uche asked, trying to sound casual. 
course, my friend. What is going on? Ifola replied, noticing the serious look on Uche's face. Uche took a deep breath. Ifola, I don't want to jump to conclusion, but I've noticed some strange behavior between Chijuke and your mother. Ifola blinked. She was confused as she said, strange behavior. Ha! What do you mean, I beg? I have been watching how they interact and it just doesn't sit well with me. Today, when I asked Chijuke about work, he was acting nervous. Uche explained, choosing her word carefully. Huh? Ifoma's eyes narrowed as she tried to make sense of what Uche was saying. Uche Bikopa, what are you trying to say? My mother would never be involved in anything shady. Biko, Uche, explained very well to me. Uche sighed. Ifoma, I know it is hard to hear, but I think your mother might know about Chijoke's infidelity. Maybe she's even more involved than you'd think. Ha! God forbid! Ifoma's face dropped, her eyes filled with tears. No, it can't be possible. That is impossible. My mother would never hide something like that from me. I am sorry, Ifoma, my friend, Uche said gently, placing her hand on Ifoma's arm. I hate to bring this up, but I am worried for you. Ifoma's expression hardened with determination. I am going to confront both of them right now. I need an answer, but Uche stopped her. Wait, Ifoma, don't rush into this without solid evidence. If you confront them now, they will just deny everything. Ifoma hesitated. Torn between anger and Uche's advice, let's watch them carefully. Uche suggested, we need more proof before making any accusation. That way, they can't slide their way out of it. Ifoma nodded slowly. You are right, my friend. I don't want to make a scene without being sure. Exactly, Uche reassured her. We will keep an eye on them. If they are hiding something, we will find out and when we do, we will expose the truth. The two friends silently vowed to uncover the secrets between Chijoke and Mrs. Carlo. Over the next few days, Uche and Ifoma watched closely. Chijoke and Mrs. Carlo would often find ways to be alone and their behavior became more suspicious. One evening, Uche decided to follow them discreetly. She watched as they slipped away to a secluded spot. To her shock, they embraced each other passionately. Uche's heart sank. The truth was worse than she imagined. The next morning, Uche went straight to Ifoma's house. Ifoma Biko Bia 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 Bia, I saw them. I saw them. I followed Chijuke and your mother. They are having an affair. Ifoma's face turned pale. That's not possible, she whispered, shaking her head. You must be mistaken. I am not mistaken anything, though. Ifoma, I saw them with my own kolo kolo eyes. I saw your mother hugging Chijuke. They were about to kiss Seth, Uche insisted. But Ifoma refused to believe it. No, my mother wouldn't do such to me. Chijuke wouldn't do this to me. Ifoma, be kodon be libu. Think about everything that has been happening. The sneaking around, the nervousness, the lies, Uche urged. Uche, I know you are my friend. But I won't believe what you're saying until I hear it from my mother's mouth. Ifoma said stubbornly. Uche signed in frustration. Ifoma, you are letting your loyalty blind you to the truth. But Ifoma turned away. Her voice cold. Eh, 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 hold it, there, Uche. Is it because you are not yet married? You better respect yourself. You are just causing trouble where there is no. I trust my mother and my husband so much. And they would never do such a thing to me. Uche realized that Ifoma wasn't ready to accept the truth. Her heart ached for her friend, but there was nothing more she could do for now. She would continue gathering evidence, hoping that one day Ifoma would open her eyes. But until then, Uche knew their friendship was strained and she would have to face this battle for the truth alone. At this point, Uche knew she had to be careful. But she couldn't sit back and do nothing. She began following Chijuke and Mrs. Carlo closely, watching their every move. One afternoon, she followed them to a small hotel 
on the outskirts of the town. They checked into a room together, confirming her worst fears. Her heart raced as she quickly snapped some photos of them entering the room. That is it, she thought to herself. This is the proof if woman needs to finally believe me. She would know that I am a good friend. But just as she turned to leave, she heard a voice behind her. Uchi, what are you doing here? Chichuke's voice was sharp and his eyes burned with anger. Uche turned to face him, standing her ground. I know everything, Chichuke. I know everything. You can't hide anymore. I have seen you and I am going to tell my friend Ifoma. <laughs> Chichuke laughed. Uche, don't be silly. She won't even believe you. She loved me so much and she believed my word. So it is my word against yours. Uche gave him a grim smile. We will see about that. At that moment, Mrs. Carlos stepped out of the room. Her face paled and full of fear. Ch Chijuki, who were you talking to? Who are you talking to? She asked, her voice shaking. Uche turned her attention to Mrs. Carlo. Disgust written all over her face. I never expected this from you, Mrs. Carlo. You are a disgrace. Sleeping with your own daughter's husband. Tishiakwa. You should be ashamed of yourself. Mrs. Carlo's eyes flashed with anger, but guilt was written all over her face. She took a step back, her voice shaking. Uchi, how dare you speak to me like that? How dare you do this to your own daughter? Uchi shouted back. I have proof. I have taken the photo of both of you together. And I am going to show them to Ifoma. She will finally see the truth and know that I am a good friend. Chijuke's expression changed from anger to panic. Uchi, you will never show her that picture. I will make sure of that. <laughs> Chijuke, you must be the biggest fool on earth to think of that. It is too late for that, so I have already sent the pictures to her phone. Mrs. Carlos's face drained of color. Her eyes widened with fear. You will pay for this, Uche. She hints, trying to regain control. But Uche simply turned and walked away, her heart pounding with satisfaction. She knew the truth had finally been exposed and there was no going back. Meanwhile, Ifama's phone buzzed on her bedside table. She picked it up and saw a message from Uche. Her fingers trembled as she opened it and when she saw the photos, her word came crashing down. Her breath caught in her throat as she stared at the image of her mother and husband together. The betrayal was too much to handle. Her own mother, the woman she trusted and loved, was having an affair with Chijuke, her husband. She felt like she has been stabbed in the heart. She dropped her phone, struggling to breathe. How, how could this happen to me? What is going on? What have I done to deserve this? She thought about all the times Chijuke had lied, all the strange behavior her mother had shown recently. Everything made sense now. The slicking around, the nervous look, they had been deceiving her right under her nose. A wave of anger washed over her. She was furious, furious with her mother, furious with Chijuke, and furious with herself for not seeing the signs earlier. She picked up her phone and dialed Uche's number. Thank you, Uche, she said, her voice shaking with emotion. Thank you for telling me the truth. Uche's voice was calm and supportive. I am here for you, Ifoma. You are my friend and you have been good to me. We will get through this together. Ifoma took a deep breath, wiping her tears. I can't let this slide. I can't. I need to confront both of them. My mother and Chijuke together. Are you sure you are ready for that? Uche asked gently. Ifoma's voice was firm. Yes. I need to hear the truth from their mouth. Uche nodded on the other end. I'll be right by your side. One hour later, Uche came to Ifoma's house. Uche looked at Ifoma with concern. Ifoma, are you sure you are ready for this? It is not going to be easy. Oh? Yes. Uche, I am ready, Ifoma said, her voice filled with determination. I need answer. I need to know why they betrayed me. Uche signed, but she understood. Okay, let's go together. You won't face them alone. I'll be by your side. They went to Ifoma's mother's house. 
Where Chijuke and Mrs. Kalu were already waiting. The tension in the air was thick, and Ifoma could feel her heart pounding in her chest. Ifoma couldn't hold back anymore. How could you do this to me? She cried, her voice shaking. How could both of you betray me like this? You have destroyed my life. You are my mother. You are my husband. Why? What have I done to you? Tears streamed down her face as she continued. Mama, I trusted you. I thought you loved me. How can you be sleeping with my own husband? I can't even believe you are my real mother anymore. Mrs. Carlo tried to speak. If I'm on one Biko, let me explain. No! If Oma cuts her off sharply, her anger boiling over. I don't want to hear anything from you. As far as I'm concerned, you are dead to me. I don't ever want to see you again. She turned to Chijioke, her eyes blazing with anger. And as for you, Chijioke, you are the worst. You were supposed to be my husband, my partner, and you do this to me with my mother. My own biological mother. Chijuke, you are evil. And my God will punish you. Chijuke looked down at the floor, unable to meet her eyes. He didn't say a word. If Ifama wiped her tears, her voice fell. Well, I am done with both of you. I don't want to see either of you again. As she turned to walk away, Uche wrapped her arms around Ifama's shoulder. We will get through this together, Ifoma, which a whispered. You are not alone. Months passed and Ifoma began to heal. She threw herself into something else. She had always loved photography. She enrolled in classes at a local college, finding peace and purpose in her work. Uche remained by her side, supporting her every step of the way. She attended every exhibition Ifoma held, always sharing her own. One day, while working on a project, Ifoma met a kind, talented artist named Alex. They talked, and Ifoma found herself drawn to him. It had been so long since she felt this way about anyone. When Ucho noticed the change in Ifoma's mood, she smiled and said to her, Ifoma, my friend, don't be afraid to love again. You deserve happiness. Slowly, Ifoma opened up her heart again. She and Alex started dating, and for the first time in a long while, Ifoma felt truly happy. Looking back, Ifoma realized that the betrayal, as painful as it was, had led her to new opportunities. She found herself rediscovering her passion and even found love again. She smiled as she embraced her new life. Meanwhile, Mrs. Carlos' life took a turn for the worst. Filled with guilt and regrets, she tried reaching out to Ifoma, but Ifoma refused to speak to her. Odegiyo's omugate were being on mama. Ifoma said the last time her mother tried contacting her. There is nothing left for us to talk about. Years later, Mrs. Carlo was involved in a car accident that left her paralyzed. She could no longer take care of herself and her once proud spirit was broken. Lying in the hospital, she cried bitterly. Why did I do this to myself? I have lost everything. My child, my dignity. But it was too late for her. She recently passed away. Her life consumed by the consequences of her own selfish action. Chichoke also faced the aftermath of his betrayal. His reputation was ruined. And he found it difficult to rebuild his life. He tried to apologize to Ifoma. But she had already moved on. Chijuke, I forgive you, but you can come and be seeing our son every month. She told him, but I can never forget what you did to me. He struggled to find work and a meaningful relationship. The shame of his action followed him, leaving him alone and haunted by the choices he made. The story of Mrs. Carlo and Chijuke is a stark reminder of the dangers of selfishness and betrayal. Their lives were destroyed by their actions and they paid the price for it. But Ifoma and Uche's friendship stand as a testament to the power of loyalty, support and resilience. Through all the pain, Ifoma found a way to heal and rebuild her life, proving that even after the deepest betrayal, 
there is hope for a new beginning. Moral lesson. Betrayal can destroy lives, leading to isolation and regret. True friendships stand by you in difficult times and help you to heal. And forgiveness is possible, but rebuilding trust takes time. This is the end of our story, and I would like you to drop a comment on your thoughts about this story. Thank you for your support on our previous story. And if you like this story, hit the like button, subscribe. Do not forget to share this story to your family and loved one. See you in the next story. Bye.